All right, guys, I wanna make a quick video um, to cover all the hardy installation deficiencies um, noticed by the building inspector and the hardy people I've been working with. Um, so I think the first and biggest that you know is, you know, the nail line was used as a chalk line. Um, so that basically puts all the laps at four and three eighths instead of, uh, this is a four, little four inch jig um, that we made instead of uh, four, which is what the product is for and matches my house. And then, you know, because they use the nail line as a chalk line, we know that you can read nail line and James Hardy and nail line, the word Spanish. Um, so that's kind of the, the big one. Um, the next one is incorrect nailing, um, both on the nail line and then like the samples I sent them, like, you know, that's a cracked nail. And this is just one board. How many are like this? This one's cracked. Um, that one's cracked. Um, none of them are in the nail line. Um, so the integrity of the building is definitely shot. They looked at all the scraps um, and there's many just, you know, cracked nails. Um, there's plenty of pictures and videos of that one. So those are kind of the biggies. The next one is these overlaps need to be um, one and a quarter minimum. These are seven eighths because they use the nail line as a chalk line. So that's like creates wind and water um, issue on the lapping. Um, the other kind of moving on to different topic is butt joints. Butt joints must be on a on a stud. Um, so like here's kind of a line they made. Here's a line they made. This is not on the stud. Um, the instructions say it must be. On a stud. Um, and then the other part, you know, these guys are gonna have to use their brains a little bit when they do this. You can't nail three eighths inches from the outside. So if they got a nail butt joint, you know, we're not putting a nail right here. It needs to be like a half inch. It needs to be with greater than three eighths, but also has to hit that one and a half inch stud. So let's make sure they get the, the butt joints right. Um, from the first install, we also know that they didn't do the, the flashing um, across the whole building. They got lazy and missed about half of it. Um, the flashing is also um, required to be one inch down, which wasn't adhered to. Um, the nail line's at one inch. So since they used that as a chalk line, we know by default the flashing wasn't down um, to one inch. Um, the gaps, so the gaps um, on the edges to get the cock in there and the hold, it needs to be um, one eighth. Um, this is where they first started, so I think Someone made a comment that like I said, dog, oh, butt that shit up against it, which is which is A, untrue, and just two is they were done with this wall before I even, you know, said good morning. Um, so one eighth is, uh, I looked online, what's a common one eighth measurement? Uh, two, two pennies is one eighth. Um, so that's not one eighth, that's not one eighth, that's not one eighth, that's not one eighth. That one, that one is. So that gives you some perspective of how, how much one eighth is, you know? Uh, not one eighth, not one eighth. So there's, None of these are in compliance. Um, so the, what happens is the cock doesn't get in there and then it's on the edge and then the cock just rolls off and, and you know, creates more maintenance issues. Um, I would tell them to use a shim. I mean, it sh shim one side and make them all like perfect. And then, you know, but you, they can do it however they want, but that, that's how I would approach it. I'd put a little shim in there and pull it out after it blanks up. Um, pin back corners. So the instructions say that these things are for aesthetics only. Um, actually, it's in bold, and there's like almost nothing in bold in the instructions. And everything I got here, it's all, it's all mapped to the instructions. Um, so we're not going to do this because, you know, it's it's just going to lead to more problems. There's like here, there's many that are cracked, and then if you actually do it, you got to use a finish nail, and it's supposed to be one inch by one inch, I think. You know, so don't even do it. It's, if it's going to be aesthetics, then it needs to be perfect. Like that, like that's all crooked and stuff. Like they. Like just don't let's just not do it we're not gonna do it yeah that one's on the edge um so no pin backs on the reinstall um talked about gaps the gaps on top are a quarter inch and not cocked because the other thing that was missed is all this stuff needs flashing anything where like water can run down and then touches something that's not a lap needs z flashing so like that would need z flashing that would need z flashing that would need z flashing um, so we got to get the Z flashing on there, um, quarter inch between the lap or, and the, or the trim and the Z flashing, not cocked. 
Um, also the first lap above the window trim. So like two things, one, no butt joints in that lap. I didn't notice any, um, but uh, you know, so no butt joints in that lap. And then you're supposed to put a starter strip under that one too to kick it out a little bit to keep the water kind of going out versus in. It's a starter strip on that first lap. Um, also on the starter strips, it shouldn't be one continuous piece. This should have periodic um, holes kind of in the bottom so that way any moisture that gets between the Tyvek and the siding um, uh, kind of can run out. And then anything on the bottom gets a starter strip. Um, they pulled this bottom lap off. There's no starter strip there. So like you need a starter strip. That's what kind of kicks it out. Um, and then like, if, like this, you know, I don't know where it was. It shouldn't be right up on this trim. It should be a little bit of a gap. So that way like the moisture again has a place to go. Um, let me check my list. I think that's it on the siding. The trim, we talked about the Z flashing. The correct order of operation is you get the OSB, then flashing, um, then tie back over the flashing. So that's the headline. Then you put a starter strip, then that first lap. So that's how those need to be done um, to get it for the instructions. Uh, let me see the next page here. <coughs> um, vertical trim, not cut correctly. So here's a prime example. Um, you know, a couple things. One, this, this kick out looks like crap and there's a chip in there because they put the nail on the edge. Um, but that should be a 22 and a half to 45 degree kind of bevel cut downward so that any water gets in there. Um, uh, has a place to go and then like, it'll help seed that so you don't have that kick out. I mean, hopefully like, you know, please communicate this, this is like a finished product. This is finishing, not framing. Like let's use a complete piece here. You know, I don't know why they used a short piece and they used, use one on this side as well you know so those need downward bevel cuts um also the trim nails supposed to be finishing nails greater than one inch from the side um you can see what happens when you get out you know so this looks like terrible too um this is cracked this is like finished and exposed that's cracked um that's cracked that so three cracks on a finished kind of pr board's probably 20 bucks um needs to be one, one inch finishing nails and then every 16 inches so let's tell them, hey, this is finishing guys, 16 inches, like two side by side, like let's make it look nice. You know, you can see, you know, well, that's in addition to the crack. Oh, you know, like this is like, you know, if you're putting baseboard in your house, I mean, was, there's like 30 nails in there. I don't know why my things, all my papers coming in front of it. Um, like we don't need 30 nails within 12 inches. So like, let's communicate like finishing guys. Like this, this is this piece here actually looks good. They get two nails fairly straight. You know what I mean? They probably didn't need to do six, but like at least they're lined up. I, I just don't, I just can't understand what happened here. You know, um, I mean, <laughs> but you, I think you guys get it. Like make sure they slow down. Um, incorrect roof clearances, two inches on the sides, half inch on the front. So, you know, the, the, uh, Dormer's good, but but this isn't good. And then, oh, I missed this on the starter strip. This dormer needs a starter strip um, along this edge. This bottom edge requires a starter strip. Um, there's no starter strip up there. So everything on the bottom needs a starter strip. Like that 45 degree angle, that bottom piece, like all needs a starter strip. Um, we talked about the mitering here. This should be boxed and not miter cuts. Um, um, let's make sure we follow all the nailing. And then the other thing that they noticed was you actually need to put shims around the window. And here's why. So this is like, you know, like a good quarter inch gap here. So two things. One, it, it, tilt, it tilts the board like this, like, or, you know, like, like that because it versus being flush with the wall. So, you know, you guys didn't have Z flashing on here. So this back, this top board is tilted back. So all the water would run down the siding and then run backwards um, into the tie back. Um, but the Z flashing will fix that. But the other thing is aesthetics. You know, these should be boxed perfectly. You can see like these little bump outs there because the right side of that trim is 
on the edge and then the left side's on the OSB. Like, let's shim this and get this like, like all flush so it looks nice. This is like the finished, finished building, finished product and this, this product's expensive. Um, so that's the trim on the freeze board. Uh, the instructions say best practice is to put the freeze board over the laps and shim the back. You know, it, it is optional, you know, but if you do butt the siding up against the bottom of the freeze board, then it needs cock. So you got to have that one eighth gap, you know, to make sure there's cock enough cock to actually like get in that kind of gap um, on the freeze board. Um, the corners are correct, cut incorrectly. Anything on the corner needs to be um, board over board, kind of like the trim is. Um, and here's a prime example that they pointed out on why the corners, if they're, you can't really cock them, you can't really stain them because concrete, it just falls apart. I mean, look at this one, it's already falling apart and it's uh, been up right there for two months. You know, you, like you can't, like I said, you can't cock it, you can't really put wood filler in there. Um, so that needs all board over board and uh, redone. When you step up to the eight inch hardy trim, it's three nails every 16 inches instead of two. Um, so like that's two, two, two. Um, so that um, is all nailed incorrectly. Um, and then every, everything needs a bevel cut too. So like similar to the, the weather cuts, it needs to be um, like, a, like a 22, 45. So it like puzzles together. And that just, I presumably it makes it look nicer. It avoids kind of like a bump out. Um, edges too on the freeze board. I didn't go through the whole thing, but one inch from the edge, you know, maximum, or you gotta be more than one inch away. So we don't, we can't really have any chips. I mean, pretty much all these lower trim pieces are chipped, you know, like, I don't know, this might have been careless, but like, you know, like it's, it's, this is expensive and like, you know, I wanted to match my house. My house is 20 years old and I have like zero chips. Um, Priming, let's have them prime everything. You know, anything that's that's ultimately um, not going to be sealed needs, needs prime. I can tell you looking at scraps, they did it haphazardly. You know, this is factory prime. This is um, an unprimed cut. You can see the color difference. And then that one's prime. So they, they were just kind of haphazard on the priming. Um, rather than going, hey, this is gonna be sealed, not just have them, I mean, every cut, just like hit it real quick. I think it would be just easier and would actually just bolster the integrity of the building. Um, what else? I think that's it. So um, all these to me make are common sense. Let's just relay, um, relay to Marty these, and I'm gonna obviously put this in a video and, and I have a printout with, with the mapping of like what page it, this is all in the instructions. You know, like those would require Z flashing um, too. Um, let's see if there's anything else here that stands out. Uh, but like I said, this is finish. Take your time. Finish, not framing. You can tell Marty that. Um, we don't want all these bumps and bruises. Uh, I want this thing to last 50 years. <laughs> I think that's it. So I'll make sure that uh, you guys get this, both uh, the write-up of the findings. I printed off two copies of the full book for you guys um, that you guys can refer to during the installation. And hopefully it goes perfect this next time. Uh, thanks. For see, just another sample here. Um, since you can only see so many here. Look at this on the edge crack. Bunch of punches. Look at that, right on the edge, still, still cracked. So that one's cracked, you can see. Cracked. Cracked. Not cracked. One, two, three, four. Three out of the four nails are doing nothing. Absolutely nothing. And then I can go ahead and see my billboard all across the bottom. Look at that. All right, here's another live piece. I mean, I've already shown like what, four or five pieces that were screwed up out of about eight that were exposed. You can only see like this one panel, two panel, three. I mean, there's not very much exposed here, but like, okay, just look at this one. 
edge. Look at that. I ain't doing anything. Why even put a nail there? Who would put a, who would put a nail there? Look at that one. That one's broke too. Who would put a nail there? Look at that line. Look at that arrow. Arrow. Nail line. That one's a little better. That one's a little better. That one looks like a double punch, so it's probably busted. I bet you it's not even gonna climb up there. I can climb up there and check. Oh, that one. That's not doing anything. What, half those nails doing nothing. All right, here's a real live piece. I was just working on some dirt. This is how they hung this piece. End of the board. End of the board. So complete, complete piece right here. You know, a lap would have been above here. Look at this. Crack. 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 <laughs> Watch. Look at this. Chip. That broke. We're cracked. 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 Busted. Forehand. You can see not not, not one nail. There's probably we're probably looking at 400 nails here. Not one is in the nail line. Um, I did some of these gems here, you know, like that, crazy, cracked, nail line, same, same plank, look at that, busted, 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 so these are from real life pieces, <laughs> these are real life pieces that were hanging on my building before they took it off, you know, like, like, like six, five nail punches there, you know, that nail wouldn't be doing anything, I mean, look at this, it's insanity. Um, nevertheless, here's here's the documentation. Um, also, wanted to highlight the backs. You know, if this this would ever get reused.